Hello everyone, this is the second tutorial in a series of tutorials on optical modeling and ray tracing in Comsol Multiphysics. So, in today's video, we're going to learn how to compute and how to analyze aberrations of optical systems. What you can see over here is a relatively simple optical system that will be used to demonstrate the computation of optical aberrations. So the system consists of two lenses and we assume that at this point over here we have a light source. We will perform the ray tracing then you will learn how to evaluate the wavefront plot at the focal plane of the system and I'm going to explain you how to manually evaluate Zernike coefficients that you can see over here. In this particular case, we can observe a strong defocus component. In order to make this video relatively short, I'm not going to go deep and to explain the theory of optical aberrations. The theory of optical aberrations is not an easy subject. However, to compute optical aberrations in Comsol Multiphysics, you just need to know a few basic principles. First of all, how do we define optical aberrations? Well, to define optical aberrations, we need to define an ideal reference sphere. And we evaluate optical aberrations with respect to this sphere. We can place in Comsol Multiphysic sphere basically at any point. So any of these points can be used to define a reference sphere. Of course, we want these points to lie on the optical axis Z. The most logical place for defining the center of the reference sphere is the focal plane or the approximate focal plane. So, what you can see over here is a reference hemisphere, half of the sphere, defined at the focal point. That is, the center of the hemisphere is at the focal point. The next logical question is how to compute the location of the focal plane. Well, there are two approaches. The first approach is of course to use the basic principles and basic equations of geometrical optics. You can open your textbook on geometrical optics and you can look it up how to compute the location of the focal plane of the system of two lenses. And another approach is of course to use Comsol Multiphysics. So, the Comsol Multiphysics has an option to estimate the location of the focal plane. And I will explain this option in the sequel. Okay, so let's start from scratch. We click on Model Wizard. We click on 3D. Then, I'm going to choose Optics, Ray Optics, Geometrical Optics. Click on Add. Click on Study. Then I can choose two options. I can either choose Ray Tracing or, no, or I can choose Time Dependent. I'm going to choose Ray Tracing and I click on Done. Great. So this is our console screen and the first step is basically to specify the units. Since we are living in millimeter world, we're going to specify length unit as millimeters. Okay, we click on build all. Great. The next step is to specify the length geometry. So we do the right click on geometry. We click on parts, part libraries. And then here we click on ray optics module. We click on 3D and we click on spherical lens and we choose this option. We choose a convex spherical lens. 
double click and we specify radius of curvature and center thickness. We choose that option, we click on OK, we click on build select. OK, here is our lens. OK, let us create a second lens. How to create a second lens? Well, you don't need to import it again. You do the right click and you just duplicate the entry. Now, you need to specify the offset. Since our optical axis is in Z direction, you're going to choose 80 millimeters as a displacement or as an offset, and we click on build all. Okay, so this is our second mirror. Actually, the second lens. Next, we need to select the lens material. How to do that? We click on materials, we do a right click, Add material from library and here under the option recent materials I already have my silica glass however you can find uh, silica glass by clicking on building and find silica glass here it is double click good now what is very important over here is that console automatically assigns material to the created lenses, right? If you have another object, you can simply select it over here. What is important for us is the value of refractive index. It's 1.45. This value will be used to define the focal point or actually to compute the point from which we are going to emit light. I'm going to assume that the light is emitted from a point source that's located at a focal point of the first lens. So what you can see over here is the lens and I'm assuming that basically the point source is located over here. Since I want to collimate the light. Now we can basically use the lens makers equation to estimate the focal length of the first lens since we want to place the point source at that focal length. We need to compute it for R1 and R2, that are radius of curvatures of the lens, and NL is basically the refractive index of our glass, right? Now, from this equation, you can easily express your focal length as follows. Now, what are you seeing here is a post that the companies one of my previous posts on ray tracing console multiphysics. I'm going to place a link to this post in the description below. Okay, so the next step is to open MATLAB and to compute the focal length. I'm specifying R1 and R2 and I'm specifying 1.45 as the refractive index and for these values I obtain the value of the focal length of approximately 86, 86 millimeters. Okay, now that we know that the focal length of the first lens is approximately at 86 millimeters, we need to specify the light source. For that purpose, we need to first specify the point. We need to define a new geometrical object that will be a point. So how to do that? Well, you click on geometry, you click on more primitives, you click on point. Okay, and here you can specify the coordinates of the point. Since the point is on the optical axis, axis we only need to adjust the Z parameter. Now, a very useful tool is to find where is the zero of the coordinate system. Basically, the zero is located at the front surface over here. So the value of Z should be minus 86 millimeters. Now, here I have to mention that basically, in theory, the optical length is measured from the center of the lens, right? It's measured from the point over here in this projection. And in my case, 
the value is measured from this surface over here. So there will be some deviation in the computed focal length and how the ray traces will propagate, but I'm not interested about that. However, if you want to perform a more accurate calculation, you can just subtract the lens thickness or add the lens thickness or adjust this parameter over here. The next step is to specify geometrical optics parameters. So, let us briefly go over these parameters. If you click on geometrical optics, we will obtain this main. We are assuming a monochromatic light, right? Light consisting of only a single frequency. Frequency we will specify later. A maximum number of secondary ray, this is a default option. We are going to leave it as 500. We are not going to adjust these uh, parameters since we are assuming that uh, the lens is placed in the air environment. Intensity computation, you can select if you this option if you want to compute the intensity of light. And what is very important over here is to com select compute optical path length since we want to compute optical aberrations. You can also play with advanced set settings if you want to uh, basically adjust the parameters and here you can see what are the dependent variables. Okay, let's click on medium properties. Let's see if this option. So for the medium properties, uh, you can select here specify absolute refractive index. You're going to use that option and we're going to choose the option over here, the default option, that refractive index should correspond to the refractive index specified in material description. So if you click here on silica glass, you will see that the refractive index is 1.45. So we are not going to change this option. Next, you can click on material discontinuity. Uh, here it's very important to select this option to be never, because we don't want to uh, release reflective rays. Okay, clicking on ray properties, we can specify the wavelength of the emitted light. We're going to use the wavelength of 660 nanometers. The next step is to specify or to define the point source. We click on geometrical optics, we click on points, and we click on release from point. Now. Here you need to select the defined point. So I'm going to select the point over here. Good, point nine, very good. Now, in the section ray direction vector, you're going to select conical because we are going to assume that direction of the light corresponds to a cone. Here we're going to select 150 number of rays, right? Cone axis, it's very important to select the cone axis such that it corresponds to the optical path of the system. The optical path is in the z direction and the cone angle will be pi over 24. Here you should be careful when analyzing the results since in order to compare your results with linear geometrical optics, that is the geometrical optics for which uh, you can approximate sinus, sinuses of angles as angles themselves, right? Sinus alpha is approximately equal to alpha for small angles. This is a standard paraxial approximation used in ray optics. We need to sh make sure such that we need to make sure that the cone angle is relatively small such that the paraxial approximation holds true. That's why I'm selecting pi over 24. Okay, so let's click on mesh properties and let's click on build all. So this is our mesh. This is a relatively coarse mesh. Of course, you can change the mesh size by basically clicking here on element size and clicking finer to obtain a finer mesh. Let's select a finer mesh to obtain a more accurate result. And the final step is to click on study. And we click on step one, ray tracing. Now, here instead of time units, 
we are going to select meters, right? So instead of computing the ray tracing results in time, we are going to compute ray tracing results for predefined spatial steps. So we need to specify here the maximum path length. So the path length is going to be from 0 0.0, 0 0.1 until 450, not meters, millimeters. So you need to select here millimeters. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to compute the ray tracing results starting from zero. Zero corresponds to the point source with the increment of 0 0.1 millimeter until the optical path length of 450. Okay, now you can also adjust some other parameters here. However, in interest of making this video relatively short, I'm not going to explain these parameters. And once you have done this, once you have specified the maximum path length, you can click on study and you can click on compute. Here you can track the progress of your computations and you can look into the log, right? This is in real time. I'm using a computer with 16 gigabytes of RAM with i7 Intel processor. The computer is three and a half years old, so it's not the newest machine. Let's see. It's going to take maybe 30 seconds to finish this. And you can track the log over here. Okay, so here are the results. So let's see what happens. Now, what can we observe over here? The light source is over here, right? Then these, this lens over here should collimate the light. However, we see that the light beam is not being perfectly collimated since I didn't estimate very accurately the focal length. So I need to move left or right my source point such that I have a completely straight ray paths over here. However, this is not important for the computation. And the second lens focuses the beam at the point over here. And this point will be used to define the reference hemisphere. However, the reference hemisphere will be computed automatically by console. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the sequence. But before I show you how to compute the wavefront aberrations, I will show you one extra thing. And that extra thing is how to improve this graph. I don't like the fact that these lenses are transparent. So how to make them to be solid? Well, I click on ray trajectories and I click on volume and I click on plot. Here it is. This is our, this is basically the picture from the beginning of this video. Of course, I don't like the color. Uh, this legend over here corresponds to the optical path line transversed by the wavefront, and the colors correspond to, to actual path. So, for example, here the path is in the range of, let's say, 250. Okay, so this is how you can improve this graph. Of course, there are many other parameters that you can play with, in one of my next videos, I'm going to show you how to perform the ray tracing. However, to, uh, the ray tracing for computing the spot points, right? That's also important. Okay, so let's continue with optical aberrations. So if you click on the results, if you click on 2D plot, under the 2D plot, you can select an option more plots and here you have very two very interesting options the first option corresponds to optical aberration the second option corresponds to spot diagrams i'm going to click on optical aberration and this is the main menu for defining optical aberration now what is important for you the data set 
over here should correspond to the data set Ray1. Ray1 is a data set for computing ray tracing. This is fine. Now, the next step is to define the center of the reference hemisphere. There are two options. You can specify it by yourself or you can let console to define it. How console will define it? Well, console will estimate the focal plane. So if you click here, create reference hemisphere data set, console will automatically estimate where the focal plane is positioned, that is, where the rays are being focused, approximately being focused. Okay, and these are your results. So this is the wavefront error in the focal plane. How to see where this focal plan, plane is? Well, if you click on data sets, right, you will notice after these computations that you have an additional object over here, and this is intersection point 3D1. And let's click on plot. Let's see what's that. Magic. So what you can see over here is your reference hemisphere. And you can play with the radius of this hemisphere. You can select, for example, 20. And what you can see over here is intersection of rays with your reference hemisphere. So this is your reference hemisphere used to define wavefront variations. You can adjust the parameters over here if you want to move it left, right, up, down, or, or along the optical axis. However, your results will change, right? If you move it a little bit further down the ray paths, you will see completely different results. So for example, this case of optical aberration corresponds to the focal, approximately the wavefront area of the focal plane. However, let's see what happens if I move the reference hemisphere. Let's move it for 10 millimeters, okay? Let's see what happens. Okay, build all. Now, here you should be very careful, right? That you need to, because the error happens, errors happen if you are not careful, you need to specify the units and let's see what happens okay now I moved it for 10 millimeters and let's recompute our wavefront so this is the wavefront error in for the displaced reference hemisphere okay Another interesting option that you can play with, you can play with Zernike polynomials, right? Here you can choose the maximum polynomial order, then you can click here, terms to include, and you can select individual terms. For example, let's click on vertical tilt, let's see what we get. If you only want the Zernike tilt corresponding to, basically Zernike mode corresponding to tilt, you can click on, for example, astigmatism to see what you get, etc. Now, how can I extract the values of Zernike coefficients? Well, there is a trick to do that. It's not so difficult. In the results option, you have a section called derived values. If you click on derived values, the right click, you can specify what kind of function you want to apply to your data. Now, if you click here, you can basically find an option aberration evaluation. Very good. Here the data set corresponds to the reference hemisphere that is previously defined at the focal point. Actually, we moved it for 10 millimeters.
numbers, but it doesn't matter. And you click Evaluate. Let's see what we get. Here it is. These are our Zernike coefficients. Piston, horizontal, vertical, tilt, defocus, etc. Okay, this is how you can extract Zernike coefficients. I find this option of console very useful. I'm not using Zmax or Code5 or any other software because console multiphysics can incorporate and can integrate structural mechanics and structural dynamics and heat transfer with ray tracing. And then you can obtain a very powerful environment for simulating optical systems and the formations of optical systems. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, please subscribe or support my channel. Thank you very much and have a nice day.